Good afternoon to you. Mark out of Hurricane Track here. Monday now, the 2nd of September. Happy Labor Day to you, 2024. Lots on the plate today to talk to you about. Yes, it's fairly quiet. Some might even say very quiet. And it is. We don't have any name storms or hurricanes, which is certainly not what we were expecting on this date during this season. But we do have a few areas to watch. And I think more importantly, kind of talking about why things are as quiet as they are since the very fast start. Because we can all agree, up through Ernesto, it looked like we were going to have this very, very busy season that was forecast. And of course, the caveat is, that could still happen. We don't know the future. But right now, it is fairly quiet out there. And yeah, you could even change that to very quiet. I'd be okay with that, because it's the truth. But let's look at why. And then at the end of today's update, there's a tab over here from Craig Setzer on Twitter that he posted, uh, and I'm going to talk about that tweet and um, what it means going forward and leaving you with a very important question to ponder yourselves over the next couple of months. All right? Ooh, kind of deep today. You'll see. So at the Hurricane Center webpage, what do we got? First area, broad, weak, probably not going to do much. Showers and thunderstorms out that way. But, you know, it's going to meander, hang out, whatever. Not much more than what we're already seeing. In fact, 90% chance it does not develop. Our other area, the one that's been causing so much, so much, so much anxiety, much, I guess it's a, the past tense of much, much, so much anxiety. See, I can't even talk because of it. Uh, over the last several days, lots of model watching and whatnot. And we can all agree it's a good thing we don't have a hurricane going through the islands right now but it still could try to develop as it gets farther to the west. We'll examine that. Then we have an area off the coast of Africa, and it's at a lower latitude, as you can clearly see, and um, that could try to develop some over the next several days. So yes, it's quiet compared to where we thought we would be, but it's not completely dead. The map is not blank. Here's what it all looks like on the satellite animation, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits. Here's our surface trough and associated junky disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Again, that's probably not going to do too much. Here's our tropical wave kind of tilted now. In the Eastern Caribbean, some showers and thunderstorms moving through the Virgin Islands. I have to ask my friend Brent down there. He's been uh, sending me screenshots of his Kestrel data about how hot it's been. Hey, has it cooled off a little bit? At least you got in some rain, perhaps. But yeah, we got to watch this wave energy. No, it's not going to do what some of the models were showing over the last few days, but this still could try to develop once it gets over here, and that could bring a lot of heavy rain and squally conditions and maybe some wind and surge issues. We'll see. Uh, it's a few days away, but it's not, not going to do what we saw over the weekend and whatever. Well, that was just some wild times, wasn't it? Meanwhile, off the coast of Africa, again, a lower latitude system uh, could develop over the next few days, but let's start digging into why the map looks this way and why we don't have three hurricanes on it as opposed to three tropical disturbances. The easy answer is stable air has taken over most of the eastern Atlantic. Part of that is that we are in uh, a suppressed phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation. The air is gradually and naturally sinking as it is. I say gradually, it doesn't just like come down forcefully. So it's just a, um, a suppressed uh, pattern. You know, we're just not in the favorable phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation. There are also none of these so-called convectively coupled Kelvin waves. Very fancy way of saying a little shorter area of energy that comes through and kind of seeds the region with favorability. That's just not there. That's part of it. The other pro- uh, part of it, and a, a problem in the hurricane-making process, This dry, stable air, how it got there and why, well, that's going to be the subject of papers after the season. But generally speaking, this area of the Atlantic has cooled off a little bit to the point where more dry, stable air off Morocco and vicinity has been able to work its way into the monsoon trough and just the overall factory that creates these tropical waves. So they get stunted Um, and there's just not as much energy, not as much convection, and the convection, the thunderstorms, is what drives our tropical systems. So the lack of deep thunderstorms out here 
has really put a damper on things. And again, why all of this happened and why the climate models didn't see this coming, <laughs> well, that'll have to be hashed out later by people that have a lot more time than I do to write papers and do the research on such things. But the net result is once we got to Ernesto, we basically shut things down. So now we have to wonder how long will that last? And you know, that's why I said that right there. But will it last? We shall see. We'll address that as we go forward. So what does it all look like vorticity wise? Well, there's our area in and around the Western Gulf. This is our seedling down here in the Caribbean that was causing all of that hoopla. And again, this will survive and stay intact and get over to the Western Caribbean and it could develop over here. So you folks over there do need to monitor that. That has not changed. And this will bring impacts. It's bringing impacts now to the uh, Eastern Islands. But you know, it's not a hurricane. I get it. That's what most people are tracking and uh, wanting to see if they happen. You know, nobody wants a hurricane to devastate their community, but they are fascinating to track. There's some more energy there, and there's more here off the extent of the graphic. Uh, what else do we have? The precipitable water, a fascinating way to visualize the atmosphere. Lots and lots of energy in precipitable water over here, that is for sure. And keep that in mind as we get towards this post that I'm going to show you from my friend Craig. Very, very important. You can also see the turning in the, uh, the moisture field here. Vigorous tropical wave, another one over here, and then that one coming off Africa. But then, ladies and gentlemen, you can easily see this very dry air that just keeps getting injected and ingested, two I words for you there, into the tropical wave machine. Plus, the overall machine itself is just weird looking. Like all of that moisture this far to the north, we're not used to seeing that. Normally, the intertropical convergence zone in this monsoon trough would be more east-west like this. Instead, it's more bent, and it's just throwing things off. So we're probably going to have to take the L, take the loss, in the eastern Atlantic. Nobody saw that coming, but we still have three months of hurricane season left. And that brings me to this. And I think for those of you that know my channel, you've been watching me for any amount of time, uh, I try to be as straight up as I can. You know, there's nothing false or certainly nothing on purpose. You know, we can get things wrong or we might see things in a different way than the reality ended up being. In other words, like we thought that system would develop and it didn't. But by and large, it's just facts and data. And let's look at what we've got and try to figure out what to do with that going forward. So everything that we've seen up to now, once we got to Ernesto, we hit a brick wall. But now let's look at what we have in front of us. That's the past. Again, take the L on the East Atlantic, the tropical waves, whatever, all that shenanigans out there. It, it, we blew it. Me too. All of us. I looked at it. I thought, oh, we're going to have this huge season. So we lose all that activity. We lose all that ace. Fine. That still does not mean when I look at this that we are done with the hurricane season. And let me explain. And I got some good data for you too. Wait till you see this. So what do we know? We know we still have this warm belt of water relative to average. That has not changed. This did, this cooled off a little bit, slightly below average, right against the land mass, but that's not affecting too much. But this did change. It cooled off some and it, it threw a monkey wrench in there. Absolutely. But this is still very much intact. More importantly than that, and I want you to really pay attention to this, notice what is happening. It's interesting because we're all looking over here and what's not happening, but let's not ignore what is happening right there. Do you see that anomaly right there? Let's go down to the scale. Three, four, five degrees Celsius below average. That is substantial. That is the La Nina finally trying to make itself known or whatever. Its presence felt. It's delayed a little bit, but it's coming. And I can prove it to you. Not just at the map level, but let's go to the charts from Tropical Tidbits. Look at that value. Negative 0.51 right there. What has it done since July? It's got some ups and downs, but the trend down. We are in La Nina territory. What time of the year is it? September. That's very important. Keep that in the back of your mind. All right. What else? Oh, guess what? The main development region still very much on the positive side. 
And let me just give that to you where you can really understand it. That plus, plus the positive, 0.75 Celsius above average through this area, right through here, roughly. That's the MDR. That is a huge area of ocean that is running at an average of 0.75 above the long-term mean. That is a vast amount of energy that's still available. The Gulf of Mexico, same way. And uh, I can show you that uh, as well. This is the Caribbean, though, by the way. Wow, one degree, a full degree. That has been so steady, and it's actually increased just a little bit. Yep, so the Caribbean still running well above normal. What about the Gulf? Good news, it's come down just a little, but we are still running at plus 0.75 in the Gulf of Mexico. So going back to the map to really anchor my concern here, because a lot of us are going to be looking at social media posts uh, in the coming days that seasonal forecasts are not going to verify, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. The numbers are the numbers, but the impacts are still the impacts. And we have already had substantial impacts. I want to remind you again, barrel, massive catastrophic damage through parts of the Caribbean. Millions of people without power in Houston, hundreds of thousands for several days. Deaths resulted from that. Ernesto caused deaths along the South Carolina coast, I believe, from rip currents. Um, I mean, what else? Debbie, with all the flooding that we had. All three hurricanes that we have had have directly impacted land in the first part of the season. Typically, the weaker part of the season. And that is very important to note. Now that we are at the 1st of September here, going forward, naturally, the rest of the hurricane season, about 70%, of a normal season's energy, or what we call the ACE index, is still in front of us. So we basically have most of the hurricane season still out in front. So the past in this situation probably will not dictate the future because the future is going to be over here, not over here. That is very important. And with this coming on stronger, that's going to have big implications on the rest of the season in front of us. And it's just one of those things. You cannot dismiss the next two months because of what the last few weeks have been like. That's the danger here. And then, you know, my audience, I want to just make sure people are in tune with that. And there's the data to prove it. Down we've go. We've gone on the uh, Nino 3-4 index. Steady and up. Yeah, ups and downs, whatever, but still high in the MDR, the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. So what does it mean? Well, let's go to the models real quick. I think of the models because these have just been pff, disastrous over the last few days. Luckily, not much to worry about over the coming days. There's our tropical wave there. There's the disturbance in the western gulf. A piece of energy there and a piece of energy there. So what does it look like a week from now? Let's just scooch it on out and I'll show you. There's 168 hours out. A little bit more activity. This gets tangled up in and around Central America. Very heavy rain. Rain is an impact. Yeah, you know that. That tries to amplify a little bit more. Some more shenanigans off the coast of Africa. Again, I think this area is going to start to wind down. Not worry about it as much. And we're going to have to start waiting and seeing what develops here in this zone in the coming weeks and months, which is where most of us live who even care about this stuff. Yeah, we got the Northeast and the East Coast to worry about too. But for now, let's focus on the Southwest Atlantic, the Caribbean, and the Gulf. And to that end, as we reach the end of today's update, a very important post from my friend Craig Setzer. Craig, of course, is the chief meteorologist for the Royal Caribbean Group. All around great guy and knows what he's talking about. And he's just very succinct in putting this into perspective. So let's drop me out so that we can address this. The tropical wave that the models were originally developing is now entering the Eastern Caribbean. Development is unlikely until at least, at least it approaches Central America. I showed you that. But this is where it gets so vitally important. Ladies and gentlemen, as you watch my video, and we wrap it up, remember this. The question remains, why does the Atlantic hurricane season continue to underperform the hyperactive seasonal forecasts? While there's many factors at play, one has been the orientation of the monsoon trough 
He explains it further here. By the way, I will link to this in today's update, and then you can click on this and this yourselves. All right. So yes, it's uh, outlined there. The monsoon trough configuration has been funky. It has been farther north over Africa, giving it a northeast to southwest orientation. Now this is important too. Scientific research is rich concerning the Indian and Pacific monsoon trough and intertropical convergent zone, these two phenomena. But that data and research lacks in the Atlantic. Not much has been studied. This is truly an anomaly because most of the Atlantic features a usually more east to west oriented stable monsoon trough. In other words, this is unusual. But this is where we need to highlight it in red. So what happens next? In 2014, research was presented, and again, I'll link to this tweet, and then you can click on that and read the research, showing how after September 1st, the east and central Atlantic monsoon trough and tropical cyclone-generated activity, activity shuts down quickly, while the West Atlantic and Caribbean pick up. That's where we live. Yeah. In other words, our attention will now focus on potential areas of development near the Caribbean and West Atlantic, much closer to home. Ding, ding. Yes, right through when the end of hurricane season, which is November 30th. Let's don't forget that. So when we go back to this, I want to pose a very important question to you. Are you going to just walk away from the rest of the season with that in front of you? Are you willing to bet that everything that has happened up to now will control what happens going forward when I just showed you the data that would argue against that. Now, we don't know for sure, and maybe it is that the rest of the season is just as anemic as the last couple of weeks have been. And notice what I said, couple of weeks. It's only been a couple of weeks. Everything up to Ernesto was exactly what was forecast, even above it, actually, so just keep that in mind, and remember, I provided data and not stuff to bolster some uh, confirmation bias point of view that I have. We could all get through the season and nothing else happens. That would be great for insurance, for you know all the people that don't want to have to deal with it. But are we willing to bet that that will be the case when the data suggests otherwise? Think about it, all right? All right, that is it from me which is enough for today. You guys have a good rest of your Monday and a good rest of your Labor Day. From all of us at Hurricane Track, wonderful community that we have, I thank you for watching. I am Mark Suddeth. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.